Welcome to Healthy Vegan Living. Today what we're going to be doing is cooking some zucchini and yellow squash and a pineapple in a casserole dish. And the topping we're going to use an avocado salsa that has no oil in it. Now, it does have a good bite though. A fresh, um, with fresh tomatillos. So come and see how I put together this very simple and interesting way to bake your organic pesticide free vegetables that you grew in your own backyard. Easy, simple recipe that you'll enjoy. Okay, let's get started. Welcome to Healthy Vegan Living, a whole food plant-based lifestyle. So this was the bounty that I got from underneath the squash garden area. Plenty to cook with. So next we're going to be going to the kitchen. Alright, so the first step is of course, is you're going to cut the onion. We don't use oil in any of my cooking. So I'm going to cut the bottom off. This used to believe, are to believe, this is a garden onion. We left it in the ground for two years and it is, it just smells wonderful. I've been using the tops in all my salads, which is why there's no tops. Okay, so I'm just going to cut it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to lay on the bottom. This portion right over here, it's going to melt, uh, melt down when it's cooking. As a matter of fact, we may just, what we may do is cook it on the stove to give it a head start. And we're just going to do it like this. Just enough to cover the, the bottom. Okay. See, just enough to cover the bottom. Might have to take them apart a little bit. So that when the squash sits on top, it's going to be protected. Okay, once that's done, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put it in a frying pan and we're going to fry it on the stove top. So the next thing after this, we're going to, these are already been washed, we're going to cut the very ends. Not meant, most people don't even bother doing this, something I just do in the ends here. And then we're going to, now remember this was grown in my garden. So I know exactly what's on it, which is no pesticides. Everything in here is going to be delicious. Yeah, okay. So then what you're going to do is you want some fairly thick slices. So we're going to do this. Now if there's a cooney is picked up early enough, then the seeds aren't going to make a big deal to you. They're going to be small enough. If it's a giant good zucchini, say like a couple of feet long and equally as large in diameter, then you may have to scrape out the seeds. But the seeds has never bothered me for zucchini, so that's why I just cut it up. Now what we're going to do then is we're going to put this inside our casserole dish just temporarily. We're going to have to remove it because we still have the onions to put back in. Same thing is going to happen with yellow squash. You don't need an overly sharp knife. I mean, this is just a two-dollar knife that I got from the dollar store. I do have more expensive knives. That's my boy telling me he wants to come in the house. You can see the seeds in this one, but they're not. This is just like a zucchini. They don't really bother me, so I eat them that way. Like if I was eating a butternut squash, now that'd be different. I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to eat the seeds. Okay, so we're going to lay this in here. And we're going to check our onions. Now what we're doing different in this one is we're going to add pineapple to it. See, we're not going to need this one because we don't have enough room. We're going to cut up the pineapple next. And a trick I've been doing is leaving a little bit of the head on top and I plant this in my garden. I don't know, I kind of like it, that's why I do it. Okay, for cutting this, you have to cut the sides off. Not a big deal. You're not losing that much by cutting the edges off. Ok, 
Okay, and then this goes into your compost pile. Why waste anything? Our compost pile has got a lid on it because we had rodents for a little while eating the food. That wasn't very good. Okay, and over here you're just going to cut it across and you're going to clean it up. Now this is a very, very ripe pineapple. I got it at Sam's Club for $2.50. You have to be careful when you buy pineapples because everybody has these deals. They tell you, oh, it's 99 cents a pound and you end up having it, buying the same pineapple that you would have bought at Costco or at Sam's Club for five dollars instead of two dollars and fifty cents. So it's a really good deal if you buy it from the, the larger warehouse stores. Or make sure that if you do do that, that it equates to about that price. If you don't have fresh pineapple, can't get them, you can use canned pineapple. You might have to rinse it off because of the sugars they put into it, but it works fine. Okay, compost. Let's see. I want them to be as clear as possible before I put them on the bottom layer. If those onions are down there, I don't have to use oil. It's a really good system. Okay, now the pineapple. Now you want to take all of these little edges off. And that just takes a little bit of time. That noise you hear is my dog who wants to come in and join us on the video. He's out there because he needs to have some play time. Not sleeping all day long. Okay, and you cut your slices. Now what you're going to do, you notice that this is a much bigger slice than say this. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut it in half like this. And some people don't like the core. If you, you're one of these people who don't like the core, just take the core off. You're going to put your pineapple in between. I'm going to have to redo this all over again, but you have the idea. I personally love the core. So we'll save these. You want these to be about the same size as the squash that you cut up. And you might have too much, not a problem. You can use it on your breakfast cereal. There's a lot of times I use it that way. Oh, it's a, it's a really wonderful snack. Okay, let's check on the onion again. Okay. They're not as translucent as I want them, but we're going to use them that way. Now you pull everything off again. Put the onions in. Turn off the heat. Now, of course, it's too hot to handle. And you put in one squash, and you're just going to go back and forth and use the squash and the pineapple. And uh, you might have to change it, maybe a green one, and put in. And you're just going to go back and forth like this. And the pineapple will cook along with the squash and impart its flavor. It's really delicious when you think about it. This is a small casserole dish. I could have probably used a bigger one. I may have to do that. So I'll put another one, put a green one here in the middle. And you're just kind of having a little fun in your kitchen. Like that. Now right behind me is my, my oven. I'm going to turn it on at 350 degrees and then we're going to do the same thing over here with the core. Like that. 
I'm just going to go back and forth. Now the beauty of this is you have some spaces on top. You can squeeze in the pineapple and you can cut your zucchini so that it fits on top in, in their little pieces. It can sit right on top of the pineapple. See that one? Slightly cut it. Sit on top. Here we can put it here. So what you want to do is make sure that you can still close the lid. So that's what you're gonna have to you're the thing that you have to deal with. And, you know, try to fit it, fill in all the nooks and cronies, any pieces that you can, and put the pineapple in those areas. Squish it in there. Same thing for the V squash you have extra room on the side squish it in there make sure there's pineapple all over the place no salt no seasoning nothing this way when you get to the table you can add your own salt and your own seasoning Now if I had added potatoes to this, it would be a start solution diet. But this is just basically just cooking your squash in the oven with pineapple. You have to see whether that one's going to get away with it. Okay, looks like it's going to work. So these smaller ones will definitely fit around it. Now. The dressing. This is really cool. Take your salsa, which, by the way, this is Members Mark Salsa Avocado Salsa with fresh tomatillos. Very hot. If you like hot, this is going to work for you. Okay, and then you take a spoon. And you just simply Use a liberal amount and just put it over the top. It is just a wonderful, I use this on chips, I use it on my salads. I have just been loving this. So it's like it's gonna, the heatness and the, the uh, pineapple just make a wonderful flavor together. Now, if you wanted to, you could take and put them on top like this. You have to just, it lim you're limited by what you're, yeah, as long as you can close your, your lid, you're fine. And you can take small pieces of pineapple and you can put it in between. And if you wanted to, you could add more just so that it has the same coloring, same topping. Gonna go in the oven at 350 degrees for 40, 30 to 45 minutes. You're gonna have to test it in between. Mmm, delicious. Okay, we'll put the cover on. Now you need to use a pan, a drip pan underneath, or you need to put the casserole dish on the pan. Because it, it, it might boil over. Now we're gonna show you our the oven is not at 350 degrees just yet. We're going to let it sit until it does. So we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so the oven just turned at 350 degrees. What we're going to do is we're going to take our pan, which has our creation, our pineapple and squash creation, and stick it in the oven. 
then I'll set the timer for 30 minutes and I'll check it with a fork and if it goes right through then we know it's ready. So we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so it's, I cooked it for 30 minutes, I checked it and it wasn't cooked. The top ones were cooked but the bottom squashes were still hard. So the next thing I did is I put it in for another 30 minutes and you can see the fork easily goes through any of the squashes and that's how you know it's ready. Now you have to turn off the oven, put the lid back on and get some oven mitts and carefully and, don't, and carefully remove this out of the oven. Might be safer if we just grab the casserole. We're going to put it over here. Get everything else out. You just got to do all the work. You got to make sure everything's closed for safety's sake. Now watch, you see, you go in, if it goes through in easily, everywhere, you know it's ready. And it's ready because I can feel it. There's no resistance. Now let's plate and see what it looks like. So what we're going to do, just grab a little bit like that. So then, if you were doing the starch solution, you would put your potato on the side. You could even... So then you have your meal and you have your potato. So this combines it. Some people like me, I like a lot more vegetables than mine. More squashes, more, more zucchini, more yellow. But it still meets, meets the criteria of starch and vegetables. The other day on my Instagram account, somebody had just grown a whole bunch of zucchinis, but they didn't know how to cook them. And I told them it's real easy. Just cut them up in pieces and throw them in the oven for 350 degrees for 35 minutes. Now these took a lot longer because I was putting in all kinds of other ingredients like we put in the pineapple, we put in the yellow and the green squash, the zucchini squash and the yellow squash. And here for example is the pineapple. Now when I taste this, it's going to be very hot so I'm going to take a small bite. It's going to have a little bit of that taste, the pineapple taste. And it's going to have the, the it's going to have the avocado to tomatillo sauce on top. It's got a very mild flavor of the avocado tomatillo sauce on top. It's not overpowering. It's really quite good. And I'm going to try a small bite of the um, pineapple too, and see if that's changed. And what's that done is it seems to have simmered down the taste of the pineapple. And I think what it's doing, it's kind of like a melting pot of delicious flavors. Now remember, there was no salt, no seasoning. The only seasoning that was in here was the avocado tomatillo sauce that had no oil in it. And that's why this makes a perfect start solution meal. Now you don't have to use a potato, you can use corn, you can use all kinds of different squashes to make, maintain your start side. But it gives you a, a, a way. Now this meal is going to last me quite a while. I'm going to put it in plastic bags like I do most of my meals and I'll freeze them. And throughout the next two weeks I'm going to have these delicious meals all from my garden except for the tomatillo sauce that came from Sam's Club. I want to thank you for watching me thus far and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. If you like what you see, subscribe. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.